Good day, everyone. You're watching Makoga Enterprises. Today, we're going to be discussing something very important and um, so concerning when it comes to executing our projects. And I'm going to um, be explaining the different procedures which I used and I implemented in a project which I worked in to actually raise up the quality standard of that project. So I'm going to be sharing my life or real experience. So we all will be able to use it in our different projects. So we might be working in carrying out different disciplines, such as mechanical, electrical, plumbing, um, architecture, civil, interior design, fitouts, and all that. So basically, we can as well use the, the same procedure which I use or the technique which I use in our different projects to actually raise up the quality standard of our project. How I studied or managed to study and implemented techniques to improve the quality standard in a project which I worked in. Case of, it's a building project which I worked. So I will dive straight. So initially when I joined the project, that was in November, 2019, I noticed that we have series of inspection in special requests that have been submitted and was all rejected. Majority of them were rejected. And then we also had um, material delivery inspections or material inspection requests also, which were rejected as well, which were code C. And then we had as well NCRs and SORs, which were open. And also we are going to see them as we keep moving in the KPI chart, which I, I made. So with reference to that, I put down a quality procedure plan and I made sure that I implemented, but it was implemented by suppliers and vendors, subcontractors and site engineers so that I'll be able to raise the quality standard of the project. So below we are going to see inputs which was gathered from 2016 to October, 2019. So we have an a KPI, as we can see here. So basically this is electrical inspection review status from 2016 October to October 2019. So these are the inputs which were gathered during this year. So this is a key performance index. So basically the inputs were gathered on electrical installation works. So I'm an electrical engineer by profession. So I'll be explaining or giving all the different procedures which I use, focusing on the discipline which I studied or the discipline which I worked in the project. So as you can see here, we have duration activities and we have series of action codes by consultant. So basically these are appraisals which are coming from the consultant after submitting certain inspection. It could be either inspection of work material delivery inspection or material inspection request. And then also we have series of submitters, which also will also have their own different uh, appraisers, which could either be code A, code B, or code C. And then we have some inspection which are canceled as such I put as D or for information. And then we have also here under review, and then we have totals. So between the year 2019 to October 2021, we'll be looking at the different activities which was carried out in the project. So we have the first, which is um, inspection request of work. And under inspection request of work, as you can see here, under code A, we have 0%. So we have zero and then we had 0%. Nothing was, nothing was uh, awarded with code A. So when we move to code B, we had 1,750 inspections were carried out which resulted to 87.40%. We moved to code C, which we had 249 inspections were carried out with code C. And then we had a percentage of 12.43%. And then we had three inspections were canceled, which resulted to 0.15%. And then under review, we had zero with 0% zero and total we have 2,002. This is the total inspections that we had, which were completed, the works which were completed on site and then raised the inspection of work. 
So, um, so we move now to the second part, which is a material delivery inspection or material inspection request. So we have code A, which is 0%. Code B, we had 294, which resulted to 96.39%. Code C, we had 10. Total 10 inspection were raised, which were all not approved or revised and resubmitted, which resulted to 3.2%. Eight percent. Then we had one which was cancelled with code D, which resulted to 0.33%. And then we had under review zero. So we had a total of 305. We move now to method statement. So this method statement incorporates as well the ITP. Or we look at code E, we had um, 23, a total of 23, which we had as code A, and then which resulted to 17 point. Two nine percent, and then could be we had a hundred and two, which resulted to seventy six point six nine percent, and then also for could C we had five inspection which were submitted and and uh, appraised with um revise and resubmit with could C, which resulted to three point seven five percent, and then we had um three inspections were cancelled, which resulted to two point two five percent. We had under review zero, and then we had a total of 133 total uh, method statements that were submitted for review and approval. So we move now to the next, which is material submitter. Under material submitter, we look at put A, we had five total, which resulted to 6.09%. And then put B, we had 62, which resulted to 75.60%. Could see we had four, which resulted to 4.87%. And then we move now to code D, which was three, resulted to 9.75%. We move to the inspections, which were under review. We had three, which resulted to 3.65%. And then we move now as well to shop drawings, which we had put A zero. Could be we had 5.98% which resulted to 98%. We had code C, which was 15 and 2%. We had code D, 0 and 0%, 0 under review, 0, 0%, 0 and we had a total of 613. So we move now as well to the non conformance reports and the site observation reports, or the NCR and SOR. So between the same year, we had a total of five NCRs during that year, and then we had a total which was closed one, which resulted to 20%. And then we had open, which was four, which was 80%. And then the ones which were already submitted for corrective action, where we had zero and then 0%. Zero and then we moved to side observation report, which, are, which is a SOR. We had a total of three, which we had closed zero, open three, which resulted to 100%. And then we had corrective action zero. So when we look at the corrective action, corrective action normally when we have an NCR or SOR, so before we close them, we have to propose a corrective action, which will be submitted to the consultant for review. And then they will go through and then see if what we propose. And if we implement that on site, we are going to prevent or make sure that we don't have the same issues again on site. So as such, you're going to approve it, and then we move now to the preventive action by implementing what we propose in the corrective action to enforce and to make sure that we will not get um, non-conformance as well on site, which is very important. So we'll move now to the next slide, which is the question now is how I fix the problem. So after looking at the key performance index, you notice that we had so much NCRs which were open, we had so much uh, SORs which were open, and then we had inspection requests which are good C, we had material delivery inspections which are good C, or material inspection requests, and then we had method statement, material submitters, as well as shop drawing which were good uh, C, we had so much good C. So as such, a question, how I fix the problem. So this is where now, I managed to come up with a particular technique which 
if we use in different projects that we are working in, it's going to help us a lot and to make sure that we drive our project or increase the quality standard of our project. So to mitigate this issue, I carried out pre-inspections and pre-review of documents prior to submitting to consultant for final inspection, review, and approval. So basically, when I talk of pre-inspection, I make sure that I go to site, check the same inspection that needs to be carried, which, which needs to be inspected by the consultant, make sure that I, I go through all the different works that have been carried out and ensure that we don't have any um, unfinished works or any non-conformance on site so that they'll be able to address them on site prior to submitting to the consultant for review or probably coming to site for the inspection, which is very important. So to implement it now, I move further by starting with the materials. For materials, what I did was for the materials to be procured and installed on site, what are the things that I took or take into consideration? Firstly, which is the first point, I made sure that material submitter for the set material should be approved and also pre-qualification of the set supplier or vendor was approved. This is very important. So prior to bringing the materials on site or before carrying out the material delivery inspection or material inspection request, we have to make sure that we have the pre-qualification is approved by the vendor or the supplier and then also making sure that the material submitted itself for that particular material is approved. So during submission of the material submitter for review and approval, I have to check the following. So I check the following, make sure that they are all in place prior, prior to submitting to the consultant for review and approval. The first thing is making sure that I check the company profile I check the product and data uh, technical data sheets and compare with the proposed material from the client. So if you look at, we have proposed materials from the client, which are stating that these are the different materials that should be used for this particular project or for this particular installation works. So based on that, I have to check, compare so that we don't have any discrepancy. I move to the third point, which is the compliance sheet to be, to make sure the suppliers adheres to the product quality standard from the client. So we have different compliance sheets that are coming from the client stating that we have certain materials and this is the quality standard of that particular material. So I have to make sure that I check and compare that of the client as well as of the supplier or the vendor to make sure that we don't have discrepancy of the materials. The fourth point is the company trade license if it is not valid. So we have to make sure that the attached company trade license should be valid by the supplier or the vendor. The fifth point is the company previous approval of the same material from previous projects. So you have to check as well to make sure that the different projects which the supplier vendor had supply materials are all um, projects which we know and they are prominent projects. Move now to the sixth point, which is a latest test report. So we, they have to provide the latest test report, which is for their particular materials. Number seven point is a country of origin to verify if it is as per the client requirement. So as per client requirement, it suffices that or requires that certain materials which needs to be brought on site have to come from this particular country. So it has to be it has to be stated as well in the material submitter. So as such, we'll be able to verify to make sure that they are not deviating from the client requirement. So we'll move to the eighth point, which is warranty certificate to verify if it conforms to the project or national standards. So the second point now is after making sure that the material submitters and the different submitters are being approved, such as the material submitter, the pre-qualifications, they are all approved. So the next point now is going to be, which is the second point, I requested for factory acceptance tests for the different materials. So while requesting for the uh, uh, factory acceptance tests, I'll have to look at the different materials, such as I made sure that I requested fat 
of factory acceptance tests for transformers. So all transformers that are brought to the project were all carried out factory acceptance tests. So I all approved and also as such, I have to invite a consultant as well to the factory so that we go there and check to ensure that these transformers are all okay and fit for use so we can bring them to the project. The next is going to be standby diesel generator set. So the number of generator sets that needs to be brought to the project, we have to conduct as well factory acceptance tests. So I, I'll make a video which I'll explain all. Probably I have some a video which I've done on factory acceptance tests for LV panels. So you get to understand the different procedures and the sequence on how the, the supplier or the factory is carrying out the different factory acceptance tests for different materials. The third point is LV panels and automatic transfer switches. So for this, I if you notice that you see that for the third point, we have LV panels, and then for the fourth point, we have LV panels as well. So the first, the first, which is the third point, we will be talking of LV panels with automatic transfer switches. So in this case, now we'll be talking of uh, the, the, the LV panel have both supplies. So it is feeding from Karama as well as feeding from the generator or normal supply and emergency supply. So the third now is just a normal LV panel with one breaker, which is feeding from either the mains or whatever. So the fifth point is capacitor bar. And then also while the, the rest of the panels such as DB, SMDBs, MCCs, we carry out site acceptance tests in the project itself. And then prior to installing that different panels on site. Once the above was verified, which is a third point now and passed, Materials can now be procured and brought to site. I will carry out material inspection once materials arrive on site by comparing the delivered materials with the delivery node or DN, also with the reference to the approved material submitter to ensure that there is no discrepancy with the materials that are brought on site. This is very important. So now we'll move forward. The shop drawing. So there are different things that are taken into consideration while reviewing the shop, shop drawing. So we'll dive straight now into understanding what should be done while we review our shop drawing. So I reviewed all the shop drawings and technical submitters slash engineering calculations prior to submitting to the consultant for review and approval while reviewing. While reviewing now the shop drawing, this is what I did. I referenced to the IFC, which is the latest IFC from the client which is issued for construction drawing. For the different services, we focus on as well on the interior design drawings so of the particular trade drawing, as well as the interior design IFC of the client as well. So we start looking at the plan elevation and reflected ceiling plan, as well as the floor finishes, because we might be having some points on the floors which we will be taking into consideration while reviewing the shop drawings and the project specification as well. If any discrepancy from client side, I will request for information, which is an RFI from the client for further information and details. So for example, we have shop drawings that have been um, prepared already. So while reviewing them, when we are comparing now the shop drawing, which are supposed to be submitted to them for review and approval, we compare as well with the IFC, which is either from the different services, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, or probably architecture, civil. So we're comparing these different drawings and then we find out that we have discrepancy or RFI or request for information to the client, stating the different points that are non matching with the, the shop drawing or with the IFC so that we get response from the client if we should proceed further or not. So I'll give an example of, in a case that we had, I, I, I reviewed a drawing, um, a fire alarm drawing, whereby a particular location we had few smoke detectors uh, below four ceiling, and then above four ceiling in that location, we don't have any um, smoke detector. So I had to raise an RFI stating that we will be incorporating or adding a smoke detector above four ceiling in the shop drawing so that we get um, we get a confirmation from the client prior to 
adding those smoke detectors. So it works that way. So it's very important to be able to verify and to make sure that we don't have discrepancy. If the discrepancy that we have is going to instead um, add value to the project, we request for an RFI so that we get a response to the claim prior to proceed further. For installation now, I divided inspections for inspect for installation or construction fees in three different parts. We have the first fix, second fix, and the third fix. So should only proceed after method statement for the said service is approved. This is very important. So after reviewing the different submitters of we, we, we are talking of the shop drawings and the uh, material submitters or method statement. So the method statement needs to be approved prior to proceeding with the different installation works on site. The shop drawings also need to be approved prior to proceeding with the installation work on site. You don't proceed with the installation work on site when the shop drawing is not approved or perhaps the method statement is not approved. We have to revise them, get approval prior to proceeding with the installation work. So as such, if we carry out the installation work on site, while we can come for the inspection, and then we notice that the, the, the attached drawings are not approved, as such, we are going to decline or cancel that particular IR because it's mandatory that we have the shop drawings, we have material submitter, we have the method statements are all approved prior to proceeding with the installation works on site, which is very important without leaving out as well the material inspection. So I'll move to the first point now, which is when the first fix is completed on site, such as conduit PVC or uh, GI conduits, cable tray, trunkings, cable ladders, I will check the installation on site with reference to the approved shop drawing and highlight the completed areas only that is being completed, as well as provide a red line if any changes on site is done. So for embedded PVC conduit, I make sure multiple offsets are avoided. This is very important so that while the pull cables we will not have any obstructions while we are doing cable pulling. And conduit should not lie directly on slab. This is very important, which might block conduit after casting and pulls issues during cable or wire pulling. So the next point is for expose J conduits and make sure that pull box are provided at multiple intervals and avoid struggling to avoid struggling and cable pulling. In addition to that, I also make sure identification labeling are provided on site on the conduits to, dis dis to distinguish the different services. This is very important. So where we have different services that we are raising the inspections, we have to make sure that we provide the labeling as well. So I've made a video on uh, identification tags on how to provide them and the different requirements that we should follow as far as the, the installation works is concerned. For the second fix now, when it is completed, such as cable pulling, wire pulling, I made sure that the predecessing activity is completed, which is the first fix. So I make sure that the first fix is completed and approved, which is the first fix, and make sure that the cable pulling or the cable, the cable or wires are pulled with reference to the approved load schedule. This is very important. Power single line diagram. Ensure cable does not exceed its minimum bending radius. Avoid double banking. Maintain 20% spare space factor between cables. Provide cable tie at a uniform interval, which is as per the method statement. Provide cable identification as per the method statement or as per the project requirement. It's very important. So while we are doing our cable pulling inspection, we follow these procedures, we'll be able to make sure that we get our project to the track or to the level that we want it to be. As such, we'll be able to, to, we'll be able to, to, to submit to the consultant and get an easy approval without any obstruction. The third point is when performing cable or wire testing. I always ensure measuring instruments are calibrated and up to date is very important. Making sure that all our measuring equi equipment or instruments are all calibrated and should be up to date. So I perform continuity tests using a multimeter by shorting one end of a line 
and test the other end. So I did that between face neutral, face F, neutral F, it will notify by a sound or a test to attest there is continuity or a beep. You get a beep sound to attest that we have continuity for that particular cable or wire, very important. I perform insulation resistant tests as well using an insulation resistant tester between phase neutral, phase add and neutral add to ensure that we have a value which is greater than or equal to one mega ohm, this is very important. So as such, I've done a video as well on how to carry out or conduct insulation resistance tests and to see the different values that we should have that will satisfy the results that we need. The fifth point now will be, the fourth point will be the third fix. So when the third fix is completed, the first point I verify if the first, second, fix is completed and approved this is very important. I ensure clearance as well have been released, signed and approved by the area or the location. So we'll have to request a clearance to ensure that we have all the different services that should be above four ceiling are all completed prior to proceeding with the installation of the final fix. This is very important. So it could either be on the wall, on the floor or on the ceiling. The third point is, I checked as well the installation of the final fix to ensure it is installed as per the latest and approved interior design drawing. This is very important. So for the interior design drawing, now we're looking at the floor finishes, we're looking at the, the wall elevation, and then we're looking at the RCP or reflector ceiling plan, which is approved as well. So we have to make sure that we check and to make sure that the points are matching as per the RCP or the the different interior design drawings that we are using for that particular area. It could either be for the ceiling wall or the floor. For the ceiling, I refer to the reflected ceiling plan, while the floor, I refer, I refer to the floor finishes plan to ensure proper positioning and dimensions are followed to avoid clashes with other services and maintain proper architectural finishes. This is very important. So for us to have this, proper architectural finishes. We have to make sure that we follow the interior design drawings and to ensure that the installation works that have been carried out matches with the interior design drawings. The fifth point, when carrying out glanding and termination for panel board or isolators, it could be either the LV panels, submain distribution board, DBs, MCCs or motor control centers, motor control panels. Um, we'll be talking as well of different small panels such as DCC panels and all that. So basically, when we are focusing on panels which needs to be glanded, these are the different procedures that we should follow. So I move to the first point, which is verify and ensure that the first fix, second fix is done. So when we talk of first fix, we are talking conduit works, which is GI conduit or PVC conduit. And then we talk of the containment works as well now, which is the cable tray trunkings or cable ladders, they are all completed and approved as well prior to proceeding with glanding and termination. So we also ensure that we have the cable pulling as well, which are all completed and tested prior to proceeding with the cable glanding and termination. So cable tray, cable tray and cable trunking for both horizontal and vertical drops to panel boards and are approved. So move here and I put here uh, approved. So this should be approved prior to proceeding with the gliding and termination. So the second point is I verify and ensure that the cable pulling and testing of cables are done. Continuity and mega or continuity and insulation design tests for both incoming supply and outgoing feeders, cables or wires are approved. It's very important. I've done a video on how to carry out insulation resistance tests, like I said, continuity tests as well. So you go to the different videos which I've done and to ensure that you follow the same, you follow the procedures that I, I showed in that video to perform or to carry out your insulation resistance test or continuity test. The third point is I verified and ensure panel board is installed and approved. This is very important. I verify the cable gland sizes selected to 
the different cables, sizes, matches, and spare manufacturer's catalog recommendation. This is very important. So you look at the catalog, and we have different sizes of cables, and there are different sizes of glands. So it could either be, because if you go through the catalog, you see different types of glands. So we look at the project specification or what is mentioned in the method statement. So based on that, we'll be able to know the gland type that needs to be used for that project. And then we match that as well with the different sizes of the gland. And you match with the cable size as well. This is very important. I verified cables are well glanded on the panel boards without leaving holes on panels that might have something to do with ingress protection. This is very important, or the IP protection. So if you look at the IP ratings for the different panels, so you should also make sure that where we carry out the glanding and termination, we should not leave any hole around that will also temper with the ingress protection of that panel board. This is very important. I make sure that cables are terminated to the respective terminals and its appropriate lock size. Each shrinkable sleeves also are all used for that different terminations on that panel board. This is very important. So while we um, separate all our conductors of that cable or the particular cables that we are glanding at the time, I have to make sure that I check the lock size, which are being used for that particular cable, and also make sure that heat string cable strips, slips are being used also for that particular cable prior to terminating to that panel board. I move to, I verify as well for proper dressing, a presentation inside panels and ensure cable and graft tack identification provided for both incoming and outgoing feeders. This is very important. So after all these are verified and passed, I will proceed with submitting inspection to the consultant for final approval. It's very important. So you make sure that we check all the different parts, all the different components. This is what I did. And I follow that strictly to ensure that it is being done on site prior to submitting to the consultant for review and approval. If the installation does not conform as above, I will issue or I issued an a non-conformance notice. This is from our side. So in the project, what we do is we had an NCN and then we had an NCR. So NCRs are external non-conformance notice or non-conformance reports that are coming out from the client. And then what is coming out from us now is a non-conformance notice. So these are all non-conformance that we, we found on site. And then we issue to the contractor in charge that have, been, that have carried out that different activity on site. We issue to the site engineer in charge or to the subcontractor. During testing and commissioning stage, I ensured method statements for testing and commissioning have been submitted for review and approve, and it's approved. This is very important. So we have to make sure that the method statement for construction as well as method statement for testing and commissioning are all submitted. So we don't use the method statement for construction while carrying out testing and commissioning since they have their different procedures or their different methodologies in carrying out different activities. So we have to make sure that we get the method statement for testing and commissioning approved prior to proceeding with our testing and commissioning. So before going for the inspection on site, I had to make sure that I checked the method statement for T and C, make sure that it was approved prior to now start checking other requirements. In addition, I made sure everyone concerned had undergone the lockout tackout procedure, which is a LUTU training prior to proceeding with energizing of panels and performing live tests. This is very important. So LUTU is going to give us an awareness, which is lockout, tackout. It's going to give us an awareness before we proceed with energization of our different panel boards on site. So I made sure that everyone concerned for the testing and commissioning have undergone the training, which is a LUTU. After that, we'll be able now to energize our panels. So I'll move to next points also. 
all live tests is carried out with reference to BS7671. So this is what we strictly follow. If you go through as well to Qatar Construction Specification or QCS 2014, Section 21, Part 23, also we have the same test. I have done a video on this as well, which I explained and the similarities of the different tests that are being carried out in QCS 2014, Section 21, Part 23, as well as BS7671. So we had similar inspections and there are different procedures we have to strictly follow in the project. So I implemented that and I enforced to make sure that the procedure are being implemented on site so that we have a quality installation of work in that project. I carry out the below test and ensure test results are satisfactory prior to proceeding with commissioning of the different system. The first point, verification of polarity. I will check and make sure all conductors are properly connected to the RYB faces. So if you go through our panel board, you notice that we have different faces of the bus bar, whereby we'll be able to be connected, we'll be, we'll be connecting our different cables to the different ports in our panel board. So basically all these different tests will be highlighted as well in the testing and commissioning method statement, which is a methodology section to give us a highlight on how the different tests will be carried out and the different tests that needs to be carried out for that particular service to be commissioned. The third also is installation system tests. I'll, carry, I'll perform the test and there are different things that I take into consideration, which I explained that already above. And then I move to the fourth, which is ring circuit continuity test. So I perform this ring circuit continuity test as well on site and make sure that we had a satisfactory result prior to proceeding or releasing to the consultant for review and approval. I move as well to phase rotation, which are being carried out mostly on MCC panels or motor control panels or motor control centers. Continuity for protective conductor this is very important. So after we've done our earthing and bonding, I've done a video as well on earthing and bonding. So we perform the earthing and bonding. Also, we'll make sure that we carry out continuity for protective conductor. This is very important. So we now move to the seventh point, which is operation test. I will check if installation operates to the design intent with reference to the project specification. This is very important. I made sure that I carried out and enforced all these different points which I mentioned above. So I move now to summary. Carrying out and implemented the procedures I laid down as mentioned above. The project noticed drastic improvement of quality as compared with when I joined the project. So I move now to the KPI after I joined the project, the different figures that I had after implementing the techniques which I used. I will show that now in the KPI after I implemented the different techniques that I used. So this is the KPI that we had before. The same services, the same um, submitters, inspections and all that. So this is between now, November 2021 to December 2023. These are the different things that were spotted between 2019 to December 2021. So this is December 2021, not 2023. And then when we go to inspection request of work, put A, could B, could C. So you notice that if we go through all the different inspection requests, you notice that we had drastic improvement of 1,693 total inspections that were submitted. Out of that, we had could be 160, 1,650, which resulted to 97.46%. And then we had a could C of 43, which resulted to 2.54%. So if we compare as well, with the above, you'll notice that we had a total submittal could be which is 1650, and then we had a 1750. So we had a percentage of 87.40%. If you go now here as well, you see that we had a percentage of 97.46%. So to tell us that we've increased in the quality standard when it comes to the inspection request.
we move to material delivery inspection as well. You notice that we had a could see of 97.962%. Could see we had 2.37%. So we had it reduced and then zero was canceled. We had zero under review and then we had a total of 253. Metal statement as well, as you can see, we move to material submetal. We move to the shop drawing after doing all the different things that I implemented, all the different techniques that I implemented. So move as well to the NCRs and SOR. These are the different total NCRs that we had. We had 24, which were closed. Open, we had one. Corrective actions we submitted at the time, which was two. So we had SOR as well, which is 11 total. We had a total which was closed nine. We have total zero, which were open, and then we had two which were under review. So we had nine plus two is going to be 11. So this is just to tell us that we've increased as well in the quality of the project when you look at the different submitters, inspection requests, material inspection, as well as the NCRs and the SORs. So I'll move now to comparison, looking at the KPI. So KPIs, comparison analysis. So after analyzing, going through 2016 to October 2019, we had could see inspection requests and submitter. We had a total of 27%. If we go through November 2019 to December 2021, could see inspection requests and submitter, we have 15%. So you see that we've reduced in percentage when it comes to code C for the inspection requests and submitters. So we move to open NCRs. We had 80%. Open NCRs. Between November 2019 to December 2021, we had 3.770% to tell us that we, we, we have reduced as well the open NCRs. So move to side observation as well. We had 100. So initially, we did, we, uh, there were no uh, SORs that were closed. So we move now between November 2019 to December 2021. Open NC SORs were zero, so everything was being closed. All the SCR, SORs, SORs that we had, we closed them, and it resulted to zero percent. So you notice that after using all the different procedures that I've shown, and I resulted to an increase of quality as far as the project was concerned. And also, I will recommend that you use the same procedure, implement that in your project to actually make sure that you increase in the quality standard of your project and also to make sure that whatever that you are delivering to your client, they are all fit for use and conform to the requirement of the project as well as to different standards as mentioned in the project specification. This is very important. Until then, you're watching Macaulay Enterprises.